Okay. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. We'll be starting on our back. So if you have a blanket or a towel, then we'll get that set up right now. So you can take your blanket or towel and open it up a little bit. So you've got it roughly this size. And then what we'll do is lay it down on the ground and just fold up one edge, just a couple of inches like this. And I like to make this a little bit higher for myself. So what I do here is pinch the blanket and just do a little bit of an accordion fold like this. And you want a strip that's just wide enough that your spine can rest on it. And again, it's nice to have, it's not necessary. If you don't have a blanket, you can just lay flat on your back. So if you have it, bring it up to the top of your mat. So you've got it running along the center of your mat on the side that you're gonna have your head resting on. If you're at the wall, I would suggest that you come a little bit away from the wall. We're gonna do some arm movements where we have arms overhead. So you don't wanna be running into the wall if you can help it. And then if you have a strap or a scarf or a belt, you can have that within arm's reach so it's easy to grab. And with all that set up, we'll come to our back. So the way that we're aligning ourselves up on the blanket is so that the edge of the blanket here is at the same level of the bottom of your shoulder blades. So if you're wearing a bra, it's usually around the bra strap level, ideally. <laughs> but I like to find the, the reference point on the front of my body. So I'll find my ribs and just walk your fingers into the center of your chest where your ribs meet. And then we want the blanket directly behind that as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. So when you lay down onto your blanket, you can kind of <laughs> see if it feels like they're lining up that spot on the front of your ribs with the edge of the blanket there. And if you don't have the blanket strip, if you're not using it, you can just be flat on your back. And if you're using the blanket strip, you might be able to feel your shoulder blades on either side of the blanket. And we'll start here. So just finding a comfortable position here on your back. Take a breath or two. Beginning to arrive here on your mat, in your body. And begin by bringing your attention inwards, just noticing how you feel this morning. And do your best to simply notice if you find that any judgment or critique comes up when you pay attention to your body. See if you can set that aside for now. And now invite your attention to your breath. Same thing, just tune in, just notice what's here right now. Now let's tune into the movement of breath a little bit more. So bring your hands to rest on your chest. And as you continue to breathe, notice the movement you can sense at your chest. You might feel a sense of expansion with your inhales and settling back with your exhales.
And now let's do the same thing at the belly, just bringing your hands down to rest on your belly. Tuning in, see if you sense any movement here. And start off by just observing. There's no need to change anything. Just notice what you notice. And now for the next few breaths, try to direct your breath right down to your low belly. As you inhale, just imagine that you could draw the air right down to your belly. And as you exhale, let everything go. And we'll spend a few more breaths trying this belly breathing out. And then release your arms, bring them back to rest. Just let your breath come back to its natural rhythm. And then let's begin to try some movement in our arms. So first bring your hands up, reaching them up towards the ceiling. And then let your shoulder blades settle down towards the ground. And our movement will just be a tiny one here with your elbows fairly straight, your fingers pointing up towards the ceiling. Just reach your arms up towards the ceiling a bit more and then set them back down. Nice, try that a few more times. You might notice the movement of your shoulder blades on the back of your body, lifting away from the ground as you lift and coming right back down to the ground as you lower, or as close to the ground as they were when you started. And just try and move in a range that feels easeful. So if you find when you lift that you're adding a lot of tension, then soften and make this movement a bit smaller. Allow your breath to move smoothly as you go. And the next time you set your shoulder blades back down on the ground, give your arms a little shake. Set them back down wherever they're comfortable and just breathe. And now let's bring our arms back up in the same way. Fingers pointing towards the ceiling, shoulder blades settle down towards the ground. And this time we're gonna lift our arms up overhead. So just reaching them up overhead a bit. And then back up to the starting place. And the same thing, try and move in a range that feels easeful. But here also try and move in a way that allows the rest of your trunk and your head, your neck to stay nice and quiet and still. So if you notice when you lift your arms up overhead that you're arching for your back or lifting your ribs, then make the movement smaller. See what your range of motion is while letting everything else stay nice and soft and relaxed. And the next time you bring your arms back up to the starting place, let this one go as well. Maybe give your arms a bit of a shake. Set them back down. And just breathe. Maybe tuning in. Notice how your shoulders feel now. Notice where your shoulder blades are when you just rest your arms.
and we'll try out a couple more arm movements here, but check in with your back body. If you find that the blanket strip is uh, comfortable, you can keep it there. If it's not comfortable, please feel free to set it to the side. So let's bring our arms up again. And this time, bring a little bit of a bend to your elbows. So your arms are making kind of a big round shape as if you're holding onto a nice big beach ball. Your fingertips are facing towards each other. And here, if you like, you can bring your thumb and your index finger together on each hand. So not the two hands touching each other, just your right thumb touching your right index finger, left side, same thing. Nice, let your shoulder blades settle down towards the ground. And now our movement will be simply to bring the arms out to the sides and then softly bring them back together. Try that a few times. Same thing, nice, easeful range of motion. Can you keep this movement nice and smooth? Can you allow the rest of your body to stay nice and quiet? Next time you bring your arms back up, we'll let this one go. Maybe shake them out. Set them back down. Take a moment again. Breathe easy. Notice how you feel. Well, now when you're ready, we'll set the blanket off to the side. So just roll to the side. You can move the blanket out of the way. We're going to keep doing a few arm movements. So make sure that you have it far enough away that you're not going to run into it if we move our arms by our sides. Awesome. Once you have it out of the way, just rest easy here. Notice how the back of your body feels on the ground, your shoulders, your head, your upper back. And then bring your arms out in a T position by your sides with your palms facing up. Now let's do some snow angel arms here. So trace your hands up overhead. And at any point where it feels like it would be better for you to have your hands away from the ground, just let them float up away from the ground. Bringing your hands up close to each other overhead and then float them back down. And we'll try that out a few more times. Try not to force your hands to stay down close to the ground. Just move in a way that feels easy and natural. And the next time you bring your arms back down, we'll leave them wherever they feel most comfortable. And now when you're ready, bring your arms back up towards the ceiling. This time, just bend your elbows, hold on to your opposite shoulders, wherever it feels comfortable, so you're not reaching too far. And let your elbows just rest on your chest. And we'll just move our head here. So start by pointing your gaze up towards the ceiling. And then you can soften your eyes here if you like. And let's rock our head from side to side. Really nice, slow, easy movement. And come on back to center when you're ready. Release your arms. And then we'll try out some movement in our hips and our legs. So this time bring your legs up towards the ceiling. Give them a bit of a shake out. Nice. And now keep your right leg up, set your left foot down on the ground. 
And for this movement, I like to have my hands on my hip bones or low belly. So your leg is fairly straight with a little bit of a bend in your knee. See if you can soften the bottom of your foot a little bit. And our movement here will just be to lower the leg a little bit closer to the ground and then come back up. We'll try that a few times. Just a really gentle, slow swing. Does not have to be a big giant movement. We're not intending this to be a workout for your core. It's just moving your leg in your hip socket. When you're ready, set this foot back down on the ground. Take a nice breath between sides. And we'll do that on the other side. When you're ready, bring the other leg up, softening the back of your knee, softening the bottom of your foot, and start lowering and lifting on this side. So really paying attention. Can you find an easeful range of motion? Moving so that the rest of your body can stay nice and easy, nice and quiet, connected to the ground. And let this one go when you're ready again. Place your foot back down on the ground. Now we'll head into a bridge pose, getting the back of our body to start to wake up a little bit. So with your knees bent and your feet on the floor, walk your feet a little closer to your seat and try and have your feet and your knees about hip width distance apart. And your arms can just rest on the ground by your sides. And all we're gonna do here is press gently into our feet and lift hips up towards the ceiling. And now we'll come straight back down. Just set your pelvis back down right where it started. And all we're gonna do here is lift and lower a few times. So go ahead at your own pace. The next time you come to the top of your bridge pose, if you like, you can stay here for a breath or two, pressing your feet down to the ground. You can keep that action and try and pull your heels up towards your head. And then softly set yourself back down. Nice, let's give everything a bit of a wiggle here. I like to bring my arms and legs both up towards the ceiling and give everything a bit of a shake. And then take a moment to just rest. All right, now let's try some arm and leg movements together. So bring your arms up towards the ceiling, bring your legs up as well. And what we're gonna do here is a bit of a scissor motion with our arms and our legs. So we'll start at one piece at a time. So lower your right leg down towards the ground a little bit, bring your left foot a little closer to your face. And we'll do the same thing with our arms. So right arms going a little bit away from us, left arms coming overhead. Nice, and then just switch, switch positions. And we'll go back and forth a few times. Nice, easy scissor motion, keep that sense of softness in your elbows and your knees, in the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. And allow your torso to stay nice and quiet, connected easily to the ground.
And then pause. You're gonna stay in the scissor shape here with arms and legs still up. So your arms and your legs are reaching in the same direction now. So if I've got my right foot reaching up and my right arm reaching up overhead. All we're gonna do here is switch the arms. So your legs are staying right where they are, but switch your arms. So your left arm is reaching overhead. Your right hand is reaching down towards the bottom of your mat. And then we're gonna do our scissors, but have our arms and our legs moving in opposite direction. So as your right foot comes up towards your head, your left arm goes overhead. And as your left foot comes up, your right arm goes up. And just go back and forth a few times. So staying with a nice, easy range of motion, but adding a little element of coordination here. <laughs> if it doesn't work, I always like to pause and find that arrangement and then keep following through. And when you're ready to let this one go, this time bring your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a little hug. Have a bit of a rock from side to side. And then come on back to center. And this time let's roll all the way over to our side. And make your way up to a seat when you're ready. Take your time, let the transition be really nice and slow and gentle. And just take a moment sitting any way that's comfortable. Just settle into your seat, take an easy breath or two. Let's change positions again. We'll come to a tabletop on our mat. So making your way to your hands and knees, you can use a blanket for a bit of knee padding if you'd like. And if you've got your blocks, you can bring them up to the top of your mat. You might use them, you might not, but they're nice to have handy just in case. Setting yourself up, hands comfortable on the ground, knees comfortable. Feel free if your wrists are not happy today to be on your forearms or resting on your fists instead of your palms. And once you've found a comfortable place here, let's move through cat and cow a few times. With your inhale, arch your back, lifting your tailbone up, lifting through your chest and your head. With your exhale, rounding your spine, tipping your tailbone down, curling under, and just keep going. You can move with your breath here if that feels natural. And then come on back to a more neutral spine. Let's try a side bend out. So look over your left shoulder. And now just try to pull your left hip up towards your shoulder a little bit, just enough so that you can feel a bit of stretch on your right side. And then come back to center. And let's do that the other way. Look over the other shoulder, pull your hip up towards that shoulder. And then back to center. And let's go side to side a few times. Just take your own pace. See how much movement you need to feel a bit of stretch on your side body. And then come on back to center. And you can take a breath here. And let's try out a little bit of bird dog. So start by just lifting your left hand and your right knee just a little bit up off of the ground and then set them back down. 
and try that on the other side. We'll start to tune in, notice how your core engages when you lift. We'll side to side a couple of times, just this tiny little lift. And then come back down to your table. We'll bring that into a bigger bird dog when you're ready. And as you do, see if you can keep that nice sense of engagement in your core. So lift hand and knee just a little off the ground, find that engagement in your core. See if you can keep that as you reach your arm and your leg low. And then back in and set it down. And try that a couple of times. Going side to side, just exploring. Can you keep that nice, stability in your core as you reach out. And the next time you come back to your tabletop, we'll stay here. Let's go back into a child's pose for a breath or two. So you can bring your knees a little wider apart. Bring your big toes together. Sit back and find a place where your forehead can rest. So it might be on the ground, it might be on your hands, it might be on a, a block or another prop. And when you're ready, come on back up. Let's meet back in tabletop. Lovely. How is everyone feeling? All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's try some of those shoulder blade arm movements that we did when we were on our back. So we'll try them a little bit upside down here. So what we'll do, I'll just kind of show you to start with is We'll start by just softening here, letting the head hang down, letting the belly hang down a little bit. And then think about moving the part of your spine between your shoulder blades, just allowing it to sink down towards the ground. And when you do this, you might feel your shoulder blades sliding in towards your spine. And then we'll come back up to neutral and then try pressing down into your hands so that maybe you can feel your shoulder blades sliding out to the side a little bit. So we'll try that when you're ready in your tabletop and you might not be able to feel your shoulder blades moving and that's fine, just experiment with it. So start by letting your head hang down, letting your belly hang down. From this position, have a look at your elbows, see if they're fairly straight here. We're gonna try and keep them straight the whole way through this exercise. So picture the part of your spine that was resting on the blanket at the beginning of the class and let that part of your spine sink down towards the ground. See if you feel your shoulder blades sliding towards each other. And then come back up to neutral. And now press down through your hands a little bit more. Maybe you can feel your shoulder blades sliding away from each other. And then just go back and forth a few times. Can you keep your elbows straight the whole way through? Can you let your head hang down, let it stay soft so your head isn't doing the lifting and lowering? Just trying to see if we can get some movement here in the upper back, allowing your shoulder blades to move. And come on back to a more neutral spine. Come up to your knees when you're ready. Give your arms a little shake. Have some shoulder circles if you'd like. Nice. All right, and let's take that into a plank pose. So we'll do a similar kind of thing as when we were pressing down through our hands, but just a little bit of that sense of engagement. We don't have to think about rolling the shoulder blades out to the side as much as you possibly can, just a little bit of that same engagement. So bring your hands down to the ground again. Try and set yourself up so your hands are kind of underneath your shoulders. They have a nice direct line of support from shoulder down to the ground. And then one at a time, step your feet back. 
toes can be tucked under, your knees can be up off the ground or they can be down on the ground, it's up to you. And then just press down through your hands a little bit. Feel that sense of engagement as you do that. And let's take a breath. And then bring your knees down. Let's head back to a child's pose here. Just take a break. If your arms are free, you can reach them out in front of you a little bit. If your head's resting on your hands, then just leave it. Leave them where they are. Awesome. And then come on back up. Find your tabletop pose again. Nice. All right. And from here, we're going to try a little bit of a balancing pose, some work for our core. So let's go through this piece by piece together. So starting in your tabletop, first things first, step your right hand a little bit away to the right, a little bit away from center. Nice. And then with your left leg, stretch it back, tuck your toes under like half of a plank. Awesome, and then shift your weight over into your right hand on your right knee and come up onto your left fingertips. Nice, and this might be where you stay here today, just adding a little bit more weight to the right hand and right knee. If you feel nice and balanced here, you can bring your left hand up onto your hip. So see if that works for you. If it doesn't, it's fine. You can stay where you are. And now if you want a little bit more balancing work, think about opening up your hips and your chest towards the side a little bit more. And the last piece you can add if you like is reaching your left arm up towards the ceiling. Nice, take a breath here. You might feel a little sense of wobbliness, that's okay, just breathe with it. If you're feeling super balanced and stable here, you can lift the back foot up off the ground a little bit. Totally up to you. <laughs> Let's take one more breath here. Pressing down through your right arm into the ground. And to come out of this, bring the top arm back to your hip if it's been lifted. Turn down to face towards the ground and softly bring left hand and left knee back down to the ground. Nice, awesome. What would like to move now in your body? Maybe you'd like to do some more shoulder circles. Maybe you wanna move your legs a little bit or your spine. Just see what suits you. And let's take another little child's pose. If that's comfortable for you, if you prefer to rest in another position, please feel free to do so. Point here is just to take a moment to catch your breath. Notice how you feel. When you're ready, come on back up. Let's try that on the other side. He'll just turn around so I can still face towards you. And from your tabletop, again, step the left hand out to the left side a little bit. Shift your weight over into your left hand and left knee. Come up onto your right fingertips. And maybe this is where you stay. Then we can step the other foot back, stepping the right foot back if you'd like. And then if you want to, if it feels stable, you can bring your right hand up to your right hip. Maybe open your chest up to the side, maybe reach the top arm up. See what feels interesting to you today. If you feel super balanced, you can lift the back foot up away from the ground a bit. Totally up to you. Wherever you are, press down through the bottom hand. Breathe easy here. And we'll come back down step by step. Bring your hand back down to your hip. Turn to face towards the ground. Softly bring hands and feet, hands and knees, sorry, back down. And come on back to a resting pose. Maybe it's your child's pose. Maybe it's just coming to a seat. And when you're ready, come on back up. Lovely. All right. How's everyone feeling? 
awesome. <laughs> okay, so once you're back into your tabletop, let's do a little bit of stretching for our hips and legs. So we'll start with the right leg. Just reach your leg back, tuck your toes under. Awesome. And from here, press back as if you could reach your heel back towards the wall behind you and take a breath or two. And then bring your leg around to the side. Plant your foot on the ground. See if you can make your foot kind of parallel to the edge of your mat. And then from there, press your foot down into the ground and try to pull up from your foot up to your hip. Lovely. And when you're ready, you can bring that leg all the way around to the front. If you've got your blocks handy, you can have them under your hands here. Awesome, find your low lunge shape and then bring some engagement to your legs, pulling front foot and back knee towards each other. Come up to a more upright position when you're ready. If you've got your blocks, you can still have your fingertips on the blocks if that feels more steady, or you can have your hands on your hips. Nice. All right, from here, let's try some arm movements, just like we did when we were on our back. So bring one hand to rest on your low ribs. Nice, just get a sense for where neutral is. So what I like to do here is do a bit of cat and cow, just to see what it feels like when your back is arching or rounding. Come back to neutral, figure out what's your neutral today, and then bring the other arm out in front. Nice, soften the tops of your shoulders. Notice if you're holding tension when you do that. See if you can bring a bit more softness. And then we're just gonna lift and lower. And the same thing as when we were laying on our back. How much can you move your arm without your ribs popping forward or any other changes happening in your trunk? Just explore. Let that one go, give it a bit of a shake. Try some arm circles here. So I like to bring my arm out to the side a little bit to start. Same thing, you can notice what happens in your rib cage when you do some circles. See how much movement you can find with your trunk in a nice neutral position. Check your breathing here. Notice, are you still breathing smoothly? Are you holding your breath? Can you move with ease? When you're ready, we'll let this go softly. Bring your hands down to the ground. Nice. And from here, we're going to go back to a plank pose. So you have two options to transition to a plank. You can uh, bring yourself back to a tabletop and then come back to your plank. Or if you prefer, you can lift the back knee up off of the mat. So you come to a high lunge shape and then step the front foot back. Whichever option suits you better. Find your plank. Your knees can stay up off the ground or they can come down to the ground. Press down through your hands. Find that engagement through your arms. Take one more breath here. And then let's lower all the way down to the ground. Come on down, belly down when you're ready. Finding a resting place here, let your arms be in a comfortable place, let your head rest. Just breathe here, maybe noticing the movement of your belly as you inhale and exhale. And now let's try a, a couple little back bends. So we'll start with our good old familiar cobra pose. So set your hands on the ground by the sides of your ribs. Nice. So your elbows are kind of pointing up towards the ceiling a little bit more. 
Now let's bring in some shoulder movement. Roll your shoulders up and back. You're feeling like you could pull your shoulder blades down towards your heels a little bit. And keep that nice engagement in your arms and your shoulders. Lengthen through your spine now, as if you could pull your tailbone down towards your heels and reach the top of your head forward. And now lift up, reach your head forward and then peel it up away from the ground. Lifting your chest a little bit. Take a breath or two right here. Try to keep your head in line with your spine so you're not cranking your head back. It's just nice and neutral. And then let everything go. Come on back down to the ground. Rest your arms, rest your head. You can wiggle your hips side to side a little bit if that feels nice for your back. And then we'll try one more little back bend here. So this time bring your arms up. So they're reaching up overhead. Have your palms facing towards each other. Nice. And from here, lengthen through your spine. I like to picture reaching from my belly button up and down at the same time towards my feet, up towards my head. And then keep your hands and your feet on the ground and just lift your head up away from the ground a little bit. Nice. And then look up at your hands. Lift your right hand up away from the ground. And maybe you can lift your left foot up off the ground as well. And then lower everything back down to the ground. And this time we're going to lift up with the left hand and the right foot. So as you lift your head up, can you lift the other hand and the other foot? Left hand, right foot. Come on back down. And we'll try that a few times. Does not have to be a big lift at all. And you can keep your feet on the ground if you prefer. Let's see what works for you. Let it go when you're ready. Bring your arms back to a restful place. Maybe you can rock your hips side to side a little bit. And when you are ready, make your way back up to a tabletop. From here, let's go right back into a child's pose. And after a back bend, I like to do child's pose with my knees a little closer together, just because it encourages a bit more rounding in the spine. But when you do this, your head's probably a little higher away from the ground. So feel free to grab a blanket or make fists with your hands for your forehead to rest on. See what suits you. And then come on up when you're ready. Making your way back to your tabletop. If you have knee padding, make sure you have that in place here if you like to use it. And we'll do all our leg movements on the other side. So stretching the left leg out behind you when you're ready. Tuck your toes under and simply reach back, pressing your heel back behind you. See if you can find a bit of stretch sensation on the back of your leg. And when you're ready, bring your leg around to the side. Press your foot down into the ground. Picture pulling up from your foot up to your hip. Looking for a little bit of stretch sensation on the inside line of your leg. And when you're ready, come on into your low lunge. So grab your blocks if you like to use them. Step your foot all the way forward. Find your lunge shape. And when you've found that shape, bring some engagement to your legs and come a little bit more upright. Awesome. All right, and let's try some of those arm movements here. So with one hand, 
hold on to your low ribs just so you have a sense of a little bit of feedback and then with the other arm you can bring it out front and we'll start with our lifts here lifting and lowering see how far you can go without arching or rounding your back or going into a side bend No gold stars for a huge range of motion. Just explore what have you got available in your shoulder joint today. And then if you like, you can try your circles, bringing your arm up to the side, circling around a bit. What kind of movement do you have available in this range? And the next time your arm lowers back down, let it go. And bring your hands back down to the ground. Let's make our way back to a tabletop. And then come up to a kneeling position. Give your arms and your shoulders some movement. You may wanna shake your arms out and do some shoulder circles. And as you do those shoulder circles, just notice where are you lifting from when you lift them up? What muscles are you using? And then soften, let them relax. Let's finish off with a few shoulder blade circles. So rather than pulling from up here, which is probably where you notice it, picture your shoulder blades on your back and try to lift just the shoulder blades up. What does that feel like? It'll be a lot more subtle. Can you let these muscles be a lot more soft when you do that? You can lift and lower a couple of times. Breathe easy as you go. Notice that you're holding your breath. <laughs> Have a look at me. If you're going like this, then notice, <laughs> notice. <laughs> See if you can move with ease. Does not matter if you've got a big range of motion. Just kind of connecting with your shoulder blades is what we're looking for. And the next time you lift them up, keep them up, pull them in towards your spine and then draw them down and let them relax. And try that a couple of times. Lift, pull them in, draw them down and then relax. And just try that out a few times. It's subtle. They might not want to move. That is fine. The more you explore these kinds of movements, the more we can try and create a connection between your brain and your shoulder blades. And then let it go, shake it out. Awesome. All right, how's everyone feeling? Nice, okay, let's come on back to our backs. So, we're going to stay on our back for the rest of the class. We'll do a little bit of movement and then head into Shavasana. So bring along anything that you'd like to feel comfortable for Shavasana, like socks or sweaters, blankets or pillows. And when you've made your way to your back, taking your time to come into this position, just take a few deeper breaths and feel the back of your body on the ground. And then when you're ready, Bring arms and legs up towards the ceiling again. Give them a gentle shake out. Come back to stillness, arms and legs still up. And let's do our little scissory motion again. You can have your arms moving in the same direction as your legs, or you can do them 
in opposite direction as the legs. It's totally up to you. This time, if you like, let your eyes follow the hand that is reaching overhead. So your head can turn just a little bit side to side as you go. Just watching your hand lift up and come back down. And then we'll let this one go. Bring your knees into your chest. Hold on with your hands, curling into a little ball. Give yourself a hug. You can rock from side to side a few times if you'd like. And come back to center. Nice. Set yourself back down on the ground. We are ready for Shavasana. So take a couple of moments to get yourself into a comfortable position using any blankets or pillows that you'd like. You might like to support the back of your knees. You might like to rest in a different position like on your side or your belly. And while you get set up, I will go turn the lights down. Take a moment to notice how you feel in the position that you've chosen. See if there's any little adjustments that you could make to feel a little bit more comfortable. Bring your attention back to your breath and invite in a few deeper breaths. If you like, you can draw your inhales all the way down to your belly. And if you breathe, start to draw in a sense of softening. Can you picture letting go of any areas of tension with each exhale? Maybe imagining that any areas of tension can soften so that it can just drain down into the ground. Or maybe soften and float up away from you. And then just notice the contact between your body and the ground. Allowing yourself the next few minutes to rest here, just allowing the ground to support the weight of your body. And we'll take a few more minutes here in Shavasana, just resting. <laughs> 